Okay guys, we are starting unit four, which is all about graphing quadratics. We are first starting off with graphing quadratics in standard form. Remember all last unit, we worked on solving for X with factoring and zero product property, with taking square roots, with completing the square and quadratic formula. And now we're gonna put those ideas to work. So when I ask you to graph a quadratic, remember, what the shape is called. We've talked about this before. It's called a parabola. Okay, that's what the shape is called. M, it will either be a U or an upside down U. There are sideways U's, um, but those are square root functions, which is not what we're looking at right now. So let's just kind of jump into this and show you how you do it. So remember, standard form of a quadratic is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. We've been doing this for a while now. Um, and the first one we're going to look at is, say I asked you to graph, and add that in, um, the function y equals negative 3x squared plus 6x plus 5. All right? So let's go through all the different things I'm going to ask you. The first thing I will ask you to find is the vertex. And we've talked about this too. Remember the vertex? is that point there in a graph that's opening up again these are both the vertex in either case and if it is opening up like this this would be a minimum because all the other values are above it that's not the best drawn parabola there if it is drawn like this this is called a maximum because the graph is below it so again the vertex is either the higher the higher the highest or the lowest point depending on how the parabola is shaped. And so, to find the vertex, we have an equation for you. I'm doing my work in red, if you can't tell. x equals negative b over 2a. And where does the b and the a come from? It comes from the equation I gave you. So remember, in this equation, a is negative 3, b is 6, and c is 5. So I'm going to take those values and put them into this negative b over 2a. So since b is 6, negative b is negative 6, divided by 2 times my negative 3. Oh shoot, sorry. I did not leave myself much room. So this is negative 6 over negative 6, which is 1. Now what you just found, notice I wrote x equals, you just found the x value of the vertex. Okay, that's important. The vertex is an ordered pair. So how do you find the y? Well, if we have an x and we want to find a y, all we do is substitute it into the equation. So I'm going to take my equation and I'm putting 1 in for x because that is the value that I need to find a y for. So that's going to be, I'll show it every step. Okay. That's going to be negative 3 plus 6 plus 5. So if you add those together, hopefully you're going to get 8. So again, what did you just find? You just found the y value of the vertex. So I apologize, I don't have graph paper at home and I don't have a printer really winning over here. Um, so here's my graph that I made real quick. And I'm first going to plot my vertex, 1, 8. So 1, 8. Okay, and I'll jump back and forth between my graph as I go. Okay, next thing I'm going to ask you is axis of symmetry. And axis of symmetry, think about, I always tell people, think about a butterfly. Again, you know I'm not an artist. Okay, but a butterfly, if you were to fold its wings upon itself, supposedly, right, if everything, if it was made perfectly, the wings basically are mirror images of each other. And so the axis of symmetry is the same thing in a function like this. The axis of symmetry for this one, I know we don't have anything graphed yet, but it, it is an imaginary line through x equals 1. Again, I'm making it dotted because it's not actually part of the graph. It's an imaginary part of the graph that we don't actually need. So how do I find that equation? And how did I know it was 1? Well, the axis of symmetry will always be x equals, because it's a vertical line, and it is the x value of your vertex. So my axis of symmetry is x equals 1. If this value here was negative 10, your axis of symmetry would be x equals negative 10. 
Next thing I'm going to ask you, does the parabola open up or down? Yes, you could graph it and then answer that question after, but there's ways to tell before. So, in standard form, your A, I'm sorry it keeps going blurry, um, if A is positive, it opens up. If A is negative, it opens down. So, looking at the equation I gave you, your A is negative 3. Negative 3 is obviously negative. This one's going to open down. That's all you tell me in that part of the question. For part D, do I have a maximum or a minimum value at the vertex? Well, if we just determine that this is going to open down, okay, flip back over here to my graph for a second. Here's our vertex again. We've just established that it's going to open down. So you should visualize that this is a maximum value. So it is a maximum because it's opening down. And no matter if it's a max or a min, your answer for this is always the vertex. Because like we talked about up here, if it's opening up, the vertex is a minimum. If it's opening down, the vertex is a maximum. So I'm answering that I have a maximum at my vertex. You'll always answer the vertex, 1 8. Okay, domain. Remember, domain just means x values. So if we look at the standard form, are there any restrictions about numbers we can put in for x? Let's think. Negatives. If I put a negative number in for x, will I always get an answer out? Yeah. Decimals and fractions? Yes. Are they going to be nice? No, but they still it still wor works. Excuse me. <coughs> and positive numbers will also give you an answer. So your domain for every single one of these problems is all reals. And we've talked about that before too. Meaning any number you can put in for this. And you can put any number in for x. So you can write all reals. You can do the notation that we use, the double r. You can also use this new notation that's called interval notation. That means negative infinity to infinity. So any one of those three things you can write. Range means what are the y values? So I want you to think about this for a minute. We've determined, I know all we have is a point and a line, but we've determined that this graph is going to open down and range is the y, okay? So what is the largest y value that I can have in this case? Eight. So for y, the biggest it can be is eight and it's everything below it. So how do I write that in math terms? We say y is less than or equal to eight. I'd like to just take a side note here for a moment. Okay, if this was opening up, say, at the point negative 1, 1, okay, and it was opening up like this, you, your vertex would be a min, and it is at negative 1, 1, okay? The domain would still be all reals. This time you would tell me the range, just as a side note here, the range would be y is greater than or equal to 1. So as a trick that people like to use is, Range, it's always the y value of your vertex, okay? And if it's opening down like this, y is less than or equal to it. If it's opening up, remember we just said this vertex was negative 1, 1. If it's opening up, the range is your y. You take your y value from your uh, vertex, and it's always greater than or equal to that number. Just a trick. Y-intercept, where does this cross the y-axis? So, if I'm on the y-axis, what is x always? You're going to tell me zero. So the math behind it, I'm going to show that really quick, and then I'll also show you a shortcut, is you're putting zero in for x. So really quick, I will do that and show you what will happen. And so I hope you can see that your first two terms canceled to zero, and you're just left with five. So what I want you to know is, in standard form, your c value is your y-intercept. You're welcome to show out this work, but it will always be just that number without an x on the end, your c. Remember how we write a y-intercept? We write it as 0, because that's your x value, comma, 5. So I'm going to go over to my graph and write the point 0, 5. <clears throat> I'll come back to that in a minute. Now, for your x-intercepts, great, it's your time to shine. Um, so x-intercepts, guys... There are four ways that you can solve. You need to know which ones apply where. Square roots. 
Guys, can we use the square root in this case? You're going to say no, because you have a B term. But if you didn't have a B term, you could. You could do factoring in the zero product property. You have to determine, can you factor this? Or you could do completing the square, if you just love completing the square. Or you could do the quadratic formula. All right. So I'm going to do quadratic formula to give some practice. I ran out of paper, so I'm going to go over here. So here I go. Let me rewrite my equation. All right. And again, I'm doing this to find the x-intercepts. So remember, A, I know this might be blurry. Give me a minute. All right. So here I go. Again, I'm finding x-intercepts. Negative B, so negative 6, plus or minus the square root of B squared. So that's 36 minus 4 times A times C all over 2A. All right, so we've been doing this for a while now, and I'm just going to take what's under the radical and throw it in my calculator here. I apologize for the blurriness. It should come in. Just give it a minute. Um, 36 minus 4 times negative 3 times 5, you're going to get 96. Okay? So what we are concerned now is you don't actually have to simplify any of this. What you need to do is figure out what are these as actual decimals so you can plot them, okay? So you're going to use your calculator. Sorry, I meant to write only say plus here. So I'm going to break this up, and I'm going to put them into my calculator. So you need to be really careful um, with depending on what calculator you're using. So first, type in negative 6 on your calculator plus and then figure out how to do the square root on your calculator, 96. Sorry for the blurriness. Hit enter. Then hit divide by negative 6. You should get for this negative 0.63299, yada, 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 but I'm rounding it to the hundredths. Next one, you want to type in negative 6 minus square root of 96, hit enter, and then hit divide by negative 6, hit enter you're going to get 2.63. Why am I doing this? Because I need to know what are these actual numbers so I can plot them. And these are approximate. So you're going to go and you're going to plot negative 0.63. So that's about, whoops, sorry, right here. And then my other x-intercept is at 2.63. So uh, 2, so about right here. Now, when I'm looking at your graphs, I want to see five points okay on those graphs I want to see <clears throat> the vertex the y-intercept and your x-intercepts sometimes you're really going to have one x-intercept sometimes you won't have any x-intercepts but if they exist I need to see them um, I'm sorry I should jump back over so if I'm let me sorry about that for actually reporting your x-intercepts to me remember when you write it in the list you're going to write it as an ordered pair so negative point sixty three zero and 2.63 comma 0, okay? Because y is 0, and you just found x values. Okay, sorry about that. Believe it or not, we are ready to graph this thing. Now, here's where the axis of symmetry comes into play. Look, we have the point 0, 0.05, right? That was our y-intercept. So I can find the point that is reflected over the axis of symmetry. So this is one unit away on the x-axis from the axis of symmetry. So what's one unit away on the other side? The point 0.25, meaning if you took 2, put it into our equation, you would get 5 out. If you look at this, these values here, your x-intercept, this is 1 and a 6.63. So this is 1.63, and this is also 1.63 away from the axis of symmetry. You could do that for any other points that you wanted to. Um, well, again, when you graph this, we talked about this a couple of sections ago, make sure that you make these rounded. I don't want to see them like Vs because that means absolute value. So this is a run through of what we're going to be working on over the next couple of days. Pause this video when you get stuck. Ask me questions. Do what we can. Talk to you later, guys.